this is a super relaxed brown bag, uh, which is basically what we have been playing with uh, in, uh, yeah, as the, graph, as the graph people. This is a tool we've been using because there's a client who has some data pipelines uh, that they, <laughs> that they want to construct and they've chosen um, this tool, Pentaho PDI or Kettle, as it has formerly been known, uh, to do those data transformations. So we're having a look and this is a, if you have a similar situation, you may want to use a similar sort of technology. So this is where we're going. Uh, generally, uh, ETL needs, this is an ETL tool, Extract, Transform and Load tool, or ELT, Extract, Load, Transform. It's fairly flexible. We're going to talk a bit about what Stuart has already spoiled, about why I'm talking about two individual products as kind of a collective. There are two products. One is PDI slash Kettle, and one is Apache Hop, which is kind of, well, you'll find out at like section two. Um, then we're going to talk through simple pipelines, what you might want to do with this. We're going to do a live demo, which is not going to be very exciting, but you'll at least see the tools. I'll talk extremely briefly about operation and deployment, and then a cool feature, which is more of a hop thing and less of a Pentaho thing. Um, but nevertheless, I am a huge fan of testing data pipelines, or at least I'm not a huge fan of how hard it is to test data pipelines, and this tool makes it nice and easy. So. I made a confusing chart because I was confused and hopefully in, through talking this, we'll come to some sort of understanding of where Pentaho sits in the data processing space. So <laughs> streaming and batch are kind of the two different styles of processing you might want to do. Streaming is like you've got data continuously flowing into your pipeline and you want to continuously do something to it. Pentaho will not easily help you with that Hop will not easily help you with that. It is a batch thing. If you have a big blob of data and like repeatedly you want to do the same set of transformations, it's going to help you with that. It is also point and clicky GUI based. Um, other things can help you with these things, but this is very much for if you've got analysts, business like people who want to kind of drag and drop and move things around quite flexibly. Also, Mm, I've yet to form an opinion about whether I prefer it to just being given a Jupyter notebook and some Python. Um, I suspect for some use cases, just the way the ways it helps you see the data, I would prefer it, but I don't have a strong preference. So these are sort of where the tools sit in that space. So <laughs> Hop and Pentaho sit in the I want to point and click and do batch processing space. It's kind of not the, not the cutting edge, but it does what it does very well. Um, it doesn't do scheduling. So if you want jobs to recurrently happen at a time of your designation, you're going to want to add something to do that. So Hop in particular is, going, is running full tilt at doing Apache Airflow integration. Um, Airflow is a tool which allows you to pizza. I didn't eat the pizza. I'm very sorry. <laughs> eat the pizza. Uh, <laughs> Airflow is a more, a more programmatic based tool that allows you to construct flows of operations. So, I say at every day at twelve o'clock, you want to go download a file and then make sure things happen. Airflow will help with that. That's also more programmatic for you, but you're more writing lines of Java or. Uh, Python or whatever you want. Um, so Spark is, Spark and Flink I've sort of cheated. So Spark and Flink have sort of moved more towards both doing batch and streaming. Flink came from streaming and went more towards, oh, but you can do batch processing. Spark started more batch processing and now you can do more streaming. Beam is set fits in the middle and you can use Beam to um, run either batch or stream processing jobs. Uh, using these engines. Uzi is Spark Scheduler, so that's why I put like this more in the scheduling space. Uh, over here, I do want to spend some time with Apache Nifi at some point. I have not, but it seems very, very spookily familiar when you've used Hop. It's basically a big UI where you construct a DAG of transformations, but it works in streaming data, not batch data. And then Kafka streams, if you... Uh, just have a stream of data that you want transforming, but it's just continuous. There's no real control over when that happens, unless we add other stuff. So 
we're here in this kind of you've got lumps of data that you need transforming. So our clients in particular has got lumps of motoring data. So they pay for, or are given, it's not really clear to me, they pay for lumps of um, data from American car manufacturers. Something to do with right to repair, I think. The car manufacturers don't really have any standards they are made to adhere to with regards to the structure of this data. So this company takes the big blob of messy data and kind of extracts it and transforms it into something useful for people trying to actually repair their cars. Um, and it is inherently batchy. It's not, it's not a streaming system that they've tried to force into, uh, into batch processing. All right, so this is the slide that Stuart was spoiled. So this guy, <laughs> <laughs> this guy, Matt Casters, is uh, Mr. Kettle, Mr. Pentahoe, Mr. Hot. He, in 2001, started writing an ETL platform uh, and first released in 2000 here uh, called Kettle. It stands for, and he loves recursive acronyms, Kettle Extract Transform Transport Load. Well, what's the E? Engine? And, yeah, let's go with engine. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, he wanted it to spell kettle, so the K stands for kettle itself. Um, it got big and moderately successful. He sold it to Pentaho uh, in 2006, and it became called uh, Pentaho Data Integration. He stayed with the project uh, all the way through to 2018. So in 2015, Hitachi acquired it. And it seems like reading between the lines, gradually there was more, what's the word? It became more enterprise, it became more static, it became, the roadmap became much less ambitious and much less interesting. Uh, and Hitachi seemed to just have an interest in it being fairly static and not changing very much and not setting any of the existing customers rather than doing anything new with it. So in 2018, Matt Caster's left and he went to Neo for j uh, which is why some of this stuff has quite such good new for for j integration, I think, because I think they, uh, they saw this thing's potential for getting stuff into neo for j and allow them to like, continue committing in uh, his neo for j hours on it. So, in the drama. it wasn't, I don't know, they say it wasn't particularly dramatic, but uh, in 2019, Matt Casters forked his original project uh, and open sourced it, and this is also open source, by the way, but open source it as an Apache product and it's about to go, it's, it's in um, incubating right now, but it is like weeks, days possibly away from going um, top level. Um, so reading between the lines, uh, and yeah, he got all the old team back together to do it. So all the, I get the feeling that all the kind of innovative thinking and like the, the drive to push this forward into the future is kind of going with hop, but this is still very, very established and uh, lots of people use it. And if you give Hitachi quite a bit of money, they will give you lots and lots of lovely help with it. Um, so that's why I'm talking about, why I'm talking about two tools because one is a fork of the other. It has had a fairly extensive rewrite. In fact, they say like, no, every line of code has changed. So like, and they've redone the UI and changed lots of things. Um, but yeah, they're still very, very similar. Uh, at this point, I didn't really get on with our slide template because that's all title and then you can't even read that over there. Anyway, um, so why, why would you want to use this thing? Um, the data is visible as it moves through the system. I'll show you that in a minute. You can see very clearly what shape the data is in, what fields are present, what's nullable, what lengths are, and it sort of uh, it understands previous steps. So when you're when you're setting up a new step, you can just sort of say, okay, well, I know I want to transform these three things connected to the previous step. Right, I can see them, and then you can you can flexibly change it. Um, it's version controllable quite neatly. There are plugins you can add in to make. Git available from the UI, but ultimately it's just a big bunch of XML that allows you to define uh, pipelines. Hop has the intention to 
allow other forms of expression. So they're going to add JSON and YAML, I think, if either of those like, but currently it's all XML. Uh, it's all automatable, so pipelines can be triggered by a, a REST API or manually through, through the GUI. And it's enormously pluggable, and it's pretty simple to add integrations to. You basically just write a blob of Java, dump it in a folder, launch the program again, and then uh, it shows up. Um, there's also, both of them have uh, different uh, server-based options. So the, like the, the original was you just ran a GUI on your local computer, but this isn't a great way of deploying things. So uh, there's a server version now that you can, um, you can run as you will. And they're both pretty similar. So <laughs> <laughs> the downsides. Um, it feels, I don't know, I'm strongly reminded of the child's programming language Scratch when I use it. It's fun and quite intuitive, but ultimately when you, when you want to do something quite simple in a programming language, sometimes you have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops, um, which, yeah, I I think if I was going to deploy a tool that was purely for me to be using to manipulate data, maybe I wouldn't use this, but um, it's not bad. All right, live demo time. Let's actually show you what I've been talking about. So first we're gonna go to Hop. This is Hop. Now, oh, I forgot to change. Okay, the first problem with Hop, and this is at odds with uh, something Matt Cassis was saying um, at the Beam Summit, which is they've made it work really well on high resolution laptops because they care a lot about accessibility. All these icons, like, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Matt Cassis. Uh, so if I actually bothered to change the resolution of my laptop, that would go away, but that's not, that's not ideal. So <laughs> we're going to do it live. This is. Uh, hop, you get a screen like this where you can you can add uh, any number of transforms, file openers, and these are all pluggable as well. And there's loads and loads of open source ones. So we're gonna go grab a CSV file from my local computer. Oops. If you click on the icon, it opens that. If you click on the name, it opens the configuration for this. So <laughs> we're going to go here. Maybe I should have timed myself on doing learning, basic exploration tickets, data sets, fraud. Right, we're going to ingest this fraud data set here. So First lovely thing, we can just go have a look at the data. Oh, come on, don't do this. No, we have to do get fields first. Oh, come on, don't be mean. There we go, right. So it's looked at the file uh, and we scanned the first thousand rows of it. Uh, and so that from that it's picked up all the data types, the formats of the dates, uh, all, the, all the boring stuff that you just don't want to have to do yourself you can do it yourself but writing like work, working out what date time format it is and passing it is is not a fun or useful task uh so yeah you can choose what delimiter this is yeah this is actual comma separated stuff um you can preview the data now there we go i'm doing it the right around so you can see a sample of the data there we had a situation earlier where some of the fields weren't escaped and some were, so we had to kind of fiddle around with the transform to get that right, but now you can sort of see your data uh, sat in the, in the table it's going to get put into. Uh, all right, so now we've got that, and we're gonna dump it into Neo4j. Neo, yeah, so in Hop, the Neo4j support is quite prominent, I guess, because Matt Cass is, is like, Works with is yeah is a fairly senior in Neo4j and um, also looks after this. So it's just like a it's, it's it's a top level thing in the in the way that like a MySQL database is not. Or it's just like text input something something Neo4j just down the bottom, which is oh well, I guess 
if Neo4j are paying for it, then uh, they get um, better integration. So we're going to write a Neo4j cipher query um, to ingest this. So first of all, we can see that this is not particularly helpful. It's just sort of like, here's, a, here's an empty box, uh, but it's not giving you much information now. If we do the magic step. We add a hop. We say this is going to pipe into that. That's why it's called hop. That's why it's called hop. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, hop stands for oh, hop, hop, hop <laughs> orchestration <laughs> platform. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, he loves the other double. Yeah, he loves those. Kettle was one. Hop was one. We just get rid of them. Put them <laughs> in the same box as Richard Stoll. <laughs> So there we go. So now this thing, oh come on, the mouse is being a little pain. Stop it. Right. So now this thing, you can say get parameters, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm being piped to from this CSV file. So now all these things are available to me. So you can do. Uh, transaction, and then it looks something like this. This is odd. This is a bit weird. This is not particularly standard uh, near for J syntax or Cypher syntax. Normally, you would do that, but for whatever reason, they have decided that that refers to something else. But these parameters you refer to by um, just the quote marks. Sorry, not quote marks. The um, parentheses. So let's oops, let's take it for a spin. Where's new for J? All right, I think up my sleeve. Now this demo is probably going to go off the rails at this point, and I'm probably going to have to kill this database or use a different database because we're going to encounter a problem very rapidly. Uh, but to run this pipeline, we... Oh, sorry, I need to actually configure. Here's one I made earlier. Point that at the local Neo. And then we run the pipeline. And then down here, we will see the data getting piped into Oh, I've done it wrong. Why is it sad? Live demos, man. You want the same number for the done for If you have a full I'm so sorry? Oh. You want the same number for the done for Yes, you're right. Well, I'm not doing anything clever enough for it to understand whether merge is going to be. Um, This is very sad. Well, we can look at the logging. The logging's nice. Oh, it's because I can't write a cipher. Merge T transaction. All right. For the sake of the demo, let's just delete the ID field for now. You would, you would pass in um, the properties you wanted to keep. Uh, but. <coughs> All right, so now stuff is flowing into the database. Uh, and in Neo4j, we can take a look. That's it, only one thing. Ah, so this is still ongoing. It's because you merged. Is yeah. most of one. It's all merged into one. Oh, you're right. You're very right. Well, possibly it's going to be faster than create. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> um, so the problem, even if you do it, if you do it right, it's even slower. Um, 
but this takes a little while. There's about a million and a half rows in that, and it's it's doing uh, it's doing batched writes, and you can configure the batch size, but it's still not particularly fast. So let's stop this. There we go. Yeah, there's lots of nice features like you can you can debug the pipeline and preview it at various steps. So you can sort of see the actual live data flowing through it. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do is show you a um, the same thing. In, well, a similar thing in Pentahome. So you can see this is very similar, right? Um, there are minor semantic differences in how um, Hop and Pentahome name things. Mostly, Hop has run enthusiastically towards Apache Beam's um, conventions for labeling data and labeling transformations, uh, which I think is a, given that they're both Apache projects, a fairly good thing. Um, so this is, this is a pipeline that does a very similar thing, but using the Neo4j import uh, tool, which instead of doing a nice transactional write to a database, just takes an empty database and goes and writes the files. So instead of having to do things in a nice asset way, it's just like that. Put, put the data on the disk and it's much, much faster. Um, this is when I started to think, oh, I've been here before and thinking about Scratch because uh, just getting, getting all the files in the right shape and getting a hold of them and being able to pipe them through. Um, I, I feel like all these five steps is about one line of Python. Um, it was just to get the command the Neo4j um, did in the right shape. Um, so we'll run this. This is not going to work, I'll warn you, but you can see how far it gets. So you can sort of see uh, as things are going through, little tick marks appear. It seems happy and it will fail the Neo4j import step because uh, I think I think what's happened is Neo4j's admin um, oh. shell script has moved on and I think the uh, no, I think it's lying right? yeah it's I think it's lying no, yeah it's, it's, fast. it's like oh, yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah no there's something <laughs> This is where I where I left it. It was trying to write to um, my Neo4j is installed in a non-default location, and it was trying enthusiastically to write into default location. So it's probably fixable, but it didn't seem worth it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No. And the pl the, on the plus side, you can see. Yeah, you can see the logs and the errors as they unfold. All right. So that's all I'm going to show you with the UI. Um, <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Can you plug one job into multiple like, pipelines and pipelines? Yes. So um, I've not tried this in Pento. In Hop, you, there's job inheritance. So you can, the, one of the initial, um, the initial things they wanted to do was separation of metadata from pipelines. Uh, and so, in one of the views um, down, let's go on to hop actually. In one of the views down the side, there's just the metadata view, and you can see where all of your databases are um, and uh, all your bits and pieces kind of laid out, not in a way we have to find them in a pipeline. Um, so, yes, there's inheritance where you can have a base project where all of your database connections are defined, and then you can have different pipelines that um, inherit from that. Um, yeah, I get. I've not gone hugely into this, but I think Hop's put more effort into having more complex, being able to support sort of more complex systems. I think Pentaho is more like you can have a pipeline. Is that your question? Uh, so, oops, sorry, I've escaped. Yeah, so that's just a bit of a recap, really. Uh, when would you actually deploy this? Um, when you have data with a complex structure and you want to be able to just kind of play around with it and uh, reshape it, and you have ETA or ELT batch tasks, not not streaming tasks, you may be, now Hop is introducing more Beam support, you may be 
could do more data streaming with it, but I wouldn't. Um, so this is just a slide on the differences between the two. Um, Hop, the original product creator that acted on the project, uh, it seems to be, it seems to have all the signs of a fairly active Apache project. They're going, they actually going from incubating to, um, to top level, basically now, 1.0 is now out. Um, they refactored a whole bunch of stuff. And I think, I get the feeling that Hitachi weren't letting them like change stuff and refactor stuff as much as they wanted. Um, Apache Beam, I uh, love a lot, uh, which is kind of a, a, a quite mature data streaming processing pipeline um, that allows you to run jobs on different, uh, different engines like Spark and Flink. Um, that's becoming super important to Hop, and so they're, they're gradually moving more and more processing to being done using Beam, which I think is a great thing. And also they, uh, they realize they're not a scheduler, the airflow is becoming um, kind of a very important scheduler, possibly kind of de facto scheduler that people use for this sort of stuff. Uh, so they are running enthusiastically towards other Apache projects, which I think is brilliant. Um, and Hop also has top level support for integration and unit testing of your pipeline. So you can just say, uh, here is my pipeline, here is a sample data set that I'm going to put into it, here is the expected result I want to have. If at any point I throw alerts and don't let me push this to production, I like testing. Uh, I like data testing especially. Um, so on the flip side, um, Pento is still very good. Um, it's a very established brand and it's got, um, I think it's still gonna be around for quite a long time. Uh, it's pleasantly stable, um, but the roadmap doesn't seem to have anything interesting going on. All I can find of a roadmap is like, the plans, but there's, because it's been around for 20 years, uh, a huge number of interesting integrations. Um, so yeah, our client is going to be using uh, Pentaho. Uh, I don't think we're gonna put any uh, meaningful effort into persuading them to not do that, because I think they've got a good relationship with um, Pentaho and Hitachi. Uh, 